introduction. All right, welcome. This is It's About Time Management Using the Redesigned Blackboard Calendar. My name is Stephanie Richter. I'm the Assistant Director of the Faculty Development and Instructional Design Center at Northern Illinois University. And today, our topic is looking at the new calendar. We just at NIU got the calendar um, in May, so you may not have used it yet. And there's a lot of great potential that uh, I think you'll be excited for. So first of all, let's start with a quick poll. Give me a check or an X. Have you used the old Blackboard calendar? So it looks like one person used the old calendar and the rest of you didn't. And I can't say that I blame you. I, without getting too negative, we want to stay positive. There, there were some problems with the old calendar. It was developed many, many years ago. and hadn't been updated until this most recent update, which has really added a lot of fantastic features and benefits to. Um, but some of the complaints, if you've used the old calendar, where that students just didn't check it because they had to go into every course individually. They would only see what was on the calendar for that course. It was difficult to use from an instructor standpoint. Um, adding events to the calendar was time consuming, a little cumbersome. And it didn't integrate with anything else in Blackboard. So you didn't get a lot of value out of adding, uh, out of actually using the calendar. So I'm happy to say that all of that has changed. And Blackboard now has a lovely new calendar. Uh, I will say the session is scheduled for an hour. It very well may not take an hour, because while I can show you all of the great features, they're really quite intuitive. So it won't take much, I think, for, for me to show you how this works. Um, so first, though, let's talk about um, how to position the tool and how we have really viewed the, the calendar as part of Blackboard. So on our documentation site, we have the calendar as a communication tool because we feel that it's really optimally designed for communicating deadlines and events to your students. It does help the students be organized, which is say it's also an organization tool, but it's also great for helping you be organized as well. It can be a great course planning tool in addition to a communication tool. So not only can you tell students when things are due and help them see that in a, an easy visual framework. But you can also organize yourself in your planning. And it really helps students be organized because they can see all of their upcoming events and due dates. And I'll show you how they even integrate to make it really easy to access those items that are coming due. For more information about the calendar, as I said, we do have some documentation on our website. So if you go to niu.edu slash blackboard and then click on communicating and collaborating in the menu, there's an entry there for the course calendar. And so on that page, we have a little bit of a description. We have a tutorial about using the calendar and a link to a quick guide that gives you some text steps on how to use the calendar. I'll remind you about this link at the end of the presentation as well. I think I've already said several times, I tend to repeat myself when I'm excited, about all of the great new features that the course calendar has. The first one that is the one that I think is probably the most helpful for you and for your students. The new course calendar displays events from all of the courses that you are involved in across Blackboard. Not only does it include all of the courses, it also includes any of the official communities that you're involved with in Blackboard as well. And all of that displays now on a single calendar. So a student who perhaps has uh, four or five courses and is in a few student organizations that have um, subscribed to communities, and maybe uh, there's a community for your 
department or your program that they're involved with as well, uh, they can see all of that and uh, remain up to date in one place. The calendar, while it includes all of the official course events that have been posted, also allows you and your students to add your own private events. So as a student, if I were trying to remain organized across five courses and maybe two student organizations, I could also add a small reminder for when uh, a scholarship application is due or a dinner I have to go home for with my parents or a birthday party. So instead of keeping multiple calendars, I could actually use my Blackboard calendar to keep all of those events in one place. I'm a very type A <laughs> organized person, and I color code everything. And the calendar is automatically color coding. You can customize that as well so that different courses have different colors, and you can see which events go together. The calendar I'll show you integrates with a variety of tools across Blackboard. So it's no longer a, a standalone tool that is only useful on its own. Uh, but you really get a lot of value out of working across the different tools. So you get some automation there. And then I will also show you how the Blackboard calendar can export out to another calendar. So for students who don't want to log into Blackboard to see this calendar, they can actually use an integration to push that out to a Google calendar or um, other services through a, an exchange that, again, I'll demonstrate for you. There are a lot of other features, but I'd rather show you those than just talk about them. So give me just a moment while I launch the application share so that you can see as I work with the calendar. Just a moment. All right, give it just a moment for the application share to catch up. Hopefully it will, let me try resizing. I noticed there was a slight issue with that. I would like this to be as large for you as I can. So let me see if I can get that to update. Can you all at least see the calendar? Give me a, a check if you can. I'm not sure why it's not um, sizing. There we go. Hopefully that snapped down and your view should get a little bit larger. Oh, it is the grade book. I apologize. Yes. We'll go back to, to the main NIU tab. So now you should see Blackboard. <laughs> I'm sorry. That was my error. I was showing the Grade Center instead of, the, instead of Blackboard. But you can see Blackboard. And that's the important part. Excellent. OK. So now that we're all on the same page and I'm on the correct page, let me show you how to access the calendar. So if I were a student and I wanted to go to one of my courses, I'm going to go to, I'm going to use the global menu here at the top because I think that's stiffy. I'm going to go to my course one. This is a sample course. So these are not real courses here at NIU. Um, <laughs> this is a guest course. But so I'm going to go into guest course one. And as a student, I can view the calendar by going to Tools and scrolling down to Calendar. So there we are. Here is the calendar in Blackboard. However, I can also get to it from that global navigation menu by clicking on the last icon in the list. So now I have two ways I can actually get to this calendar from anywhere in Blackboard. As an instructor, you can also get to it, uh, as a, or a faculty member, uh, as an instructor in Blackboard, you can get to the calendar as well from the control panel under Course Tools. So there are really three ways that you can get to the calendar. But that global navigation menu is going to be the quickest and easiest way from anywhere across Blackboard. I'm going to skip to October, because I've sort of prepped October with a few events. Uh, that I wanted you to take a look at. Just to show a little bit of the navigation here of the calendar before we get into the, the real meaty details. The calendar
Explorer has three views. You can view the monthly view, which is what we have here. You can view the upcoming week. And you can view it a day at a time. Today, well, August 1st here, October 1st rather, I don't have anything on my calendar. However, I can skip ahead and view a few days and realize that tomorrow there's something on my calendar. Uh, if I look from the week view, again, I can move ahead. Or I can view from the left, I can change the calendar to a different month and then click on a day from that view. So it's really easy. I think you'll probably hear me say quite often today, it just works the way you would expect it to. So navigating through the calendar, I find, really just works the way you think it would based on other products that are out there. So if I go back here to the month view, um, you'll notice that right now these events are kind of cut off. I don't get a lot of detail on each of these. I can click on any one of these, like, um, how about this October 2nd homework set to get a little bit more detail about this event. For uh, right now, this pink color are my personal events. And I can click there to see what I have posted on that event. And for some of these, if I click on um, the online class that's on the 8th, You'll notice there's even a, a little link here in the details. We'll get to that more. That's part of that integration that uh, the new calendar has. If I scroll down this page, you'll see because this is one of our guest courses, there are a lot of courses listed. This account is signed up in all sorts of guest courses. You can turn these on and off in your calendar just by click checking or unchecking them. So I can turn off my personal calendar. And now those pink events are gone. If I click it again, I can turn them back on. I can also change the color of any of these events. So these green, my classes are all green right now. That's not very helpful. They all look the same to me at a first glance. So I can come down and change maybe course one. If I click the small triangle here in the lower right corner, I can change that one maybe to an aqua blue. And I'll change the lighter green here, maybe to a red. And now I have strong, distinct colors here in my course calendar. Again, this is fully customizable, so every student could have different colors for their courses in the calendar. You can't assume that because the course is blue on your calendar that it's blue on theirs. But they can choose the colors that are meaningful to them and are visible to them. Um, I think me personally, I would change them so that they match the color of the textbooks or the color of the notebook that I was keeping my notes in if I were a student in these courses. Um, but every student can handle this to their preference so that it's useful for them. So that's sort of the initial overview of the calendar. Are, are there any questions on that? I'll take a moment and pause. OK, it doesn't look like it. Oh, I even got an X. <laughs> Feel free to use that check in the X anytime I, I ask a question like that. I just kind of pause and wait, but you can use the X and I'll know to move on too. So now that we know how to navigate the calendar, let's look at how to add items to the calendar. And again, it's, it's almost as easy. There is a plus sign here in the upper right corner, plus for add. If I click that plus sign, then I can create an event. You may notice this is actually um, tying into my microphone even. I could speak an event name. I'm going to call this, um, this will be my study group session. I can choose what calendar to put it on. So as a student, I can add it to my personal calendar only. But because I'm also an instructor with this, uh, this account, I could add it to any course that I'm teaching from this one calendar. So as a faculty member or an instructor, you don't have to go into a course to a specific course calendar to add your events. You can go to the main calendar in Blackboard, and then from this drop-down menu, just choose the course that you want this to go on to. So again, you can manage all of your course dates for all of your courses from the single calendar as well. So because this is 
my study group as a student, I'm going to leave this on my personal calendar. And I'm going to choose a date. I clicked on the date setting, and I'll navigate to October. This is going to meet on the 22nd, and it's going to meet at 8 o'clock. So I'll drag the hour slider to 8, the minute slider to 0, and mark that done. And then it ends that same day, October 22nd, and we're going to go until 10 o'clock. done. And then in the event description, I'll add just a little bit of a reminder. Um, we're meeting on the second floor of the library. And save. So now that event has been added here on the 22nd. Nice and easy. I can add items as well just by clicking on the calendar. So on the third here, I'm going to click. And let's say I have a standing, uh, this will be for my course that I'm teaching. And so we'll say that this is a class session. We'll put it onto the calendar for this guest course 20 that I'm teaching. We'll say the class meets on Thursdays at uh, 8 a.m. I can get to 8 a.m. There we go, 8 a.m. And it goes until 9.15. And then I'm going to repeat this. So it'll repeat every week on Thursdays from now either for 10 days, or I can say from now until, um, we'll say December 12th. So we'll get several iterations. And I can even give it a room number. Um, this will be in uh, DuSable 215. I don't know if there is a DuSable 215. I'm making that up. And DuSable spelled wrong. There we go. So when I save this event then, that's actually added on every Thursday. And that uh, curly arrow is an indication that this is a repeating event. If I try to click on that, it opens that same event up, and I can make changes uh, if I needed to. Any questions on adding an item to the calendar? It's pretty straightforward. No, excellent. I can also um, move events. So I showed you for my personal event, for the study group. Let's say we changed the the day. So now we're not going to meet on the 22nd. We're going to meet on the 23rd. So I can come in and I can change the dates and save that. And now that pink event study group on the 23rd has moved from the 22nd. That's pretty easy. However, it's even easier. If I want to move it back to the 22nd, I can also just drag and drop. So Again, when I talk about things in the calendar, just working the way you would expect them to, you can change the date of any item on your personal calendar and of any course that you, course you teach or community you lead simply by drag and drop. Students cannot do this to items that you put onto a course calendar. So for example, on the 14th, this is in a course where I'm a student. And I cannot move that around. I can click and drag all I want. It's not going to go anywhere. And if I click on it, the date is set. I cannot change that date. So your items are protected against students making changes to them. You can change any course you teach. And anyone can change something on their personal calendar. But otherwise, they're set as they are. Isabel, the repeating events, if I click and drag, it drags a single item and moves it instead of the whole event. So I can actually like drag these around and move them so that they're all off of the repeated. Um, and now this is no longer tied to the repeating. OK, good. So I'm going to drag this back because 
I liked the long row of, or column rather, of red events all in one place. But great question. Thank you for asking. So adding events, changing events, really simple. And you could do this for all of your courses. Um, I would actually highly recommend that when you have your syllabus completed and you know when all of the due dates are, you can come to the calendar and type all of those up on here pretty quickly and easily. However, if you have due dates for assignments, you may be able to get them onto your calendar in an even quicker fashion. So one of the integrations with the grade set with the calendar is that when you add an assignment or you add a test, essentially any graded item that has a due date, if you add a due date, it appears here in your calendar. So let me show you what that looks like. I'm going to go to the course that I'm teaching, this guest course 20, and I'm going to add an assignment. So under assessments, I'm going to add an assignment, and I'm doing this so that students can turn their assignment in through Blackboard. So we'll call this um, their reflection log. I can provide instructions. And then I'm going to give it points, which is required because it's an assignment. In section five, you may not have paid attention to this before, but you can enter a due date. So I'm going to make this due on the 29th, 29th at 11.59 p.m. So when I make this assignment due, you know when you create an assignment that it automatically creates a grade center column. Now, however, when you make an assignment and you add a due date, it's automatically added to your calendar. So if I go back to the calendar and move back to October, here on the 29th is that reflection log that I just created. If I'm a student and I have a course that has an assignment that's been put onto the grade set, onto the calendar, uh, for example, the um, 2 p.m. homework assignment from the second is for guest course two. I can actually use this link to go directly to the assignment. I'm going to try, because I have something special on that one. I'm going to go to the 16th where I have another homework set and click go to this assignment. And essentially, I go straight here where I can go ahead and attach my document, and submit my assignment. So when it's on the calendar, when there's a due date, not only are you communicating that more clearly to your students, that this assignment is due at a certain time, you're actually making it easier for them to submit as well, because they can submit from the calendar, and it takes them directly to the assignment. The last thing I want to show you, and I, I do see there are questions. I'll get to those in just a second. If I go back to the calendar, and back to October. I'm going to click on this um, October 2nd assignment again. And the reason I didn't do this one before was because I had already submitted this one, and it's already been graded. So if I click go to this assignment after it's been graded, it will take me to the new inline grading view. If you haven't seen this on an assignment, I highly recommend that you take a look. Uh, we have an archive that's on the Blackboard site from a workshop that's already been held about it, so you can learn all about it at your own pace. And so what it does here, because I've already submitted it, is it shows me the feedback that was put onto the assignment. It also shows me my grade and the comments that my professor left for me. So again, because that due date was on the assignment, from the calendar, I can see when it's due, I can see when it was due, and I can go directly to the results of that assignment. If I have not yet submitted it, I can go straight to the submission point for the assignment. So really kind of an all around uh, great integration for this. So I'm going to go back to the comments here, the questions for just a second. 
Isabel asks, if one, if you teach the same course each fall, can the calendar be copied? Isabel, yes, the calendar can be copied. The problem right now is it will copy over with the dates from before. So if you copy your course from fall 2012 to fall 2013, well, we'll have to go forward. So if you copy it from fall 2013 to fall 2014, the dates will be on the calendar, but they'll all be 2013 dates. So when you, yes, you're exactly right. Those can be dragged. You can't really drag for a whole year um, because they'll still be 2013. They'll still be the previous year. But you can go in and edit the due dates, and that will automatically change where it is on the calendar. Or you can change them on the calendar, and I haven't shown you this yet, but if you change a date on a calendar, it automatically changes the date on the assignment, the due date, as well. Um, I've heard rumors that Blackboard is working on what they call a date migration tool. That means when you copy over something with calendar items or due dates, you'll be able to sort of reset those for the next year. I don't know where that is or how that might work, but I've, I've heard rumors that that's what they're looking at doing. Yes, Anwar, that would be neat. So who knows, maybe Isabel, by fall 2014, when you copy your course, you can update all of your calendar dates at the same time. We'll see how that goes. Uh, Heidi, you had a question. I didn't see the note that you added to the comment. So that is uh, one downside that I have seen, is if you put a description on an assignment, if I go back to my course 20, to that assignment that I created under assessments, you'll notice that I added instructions here for the assignment. However, if I go back to the calendar, and that was due at the end of October, here, those instructions don't show here. That is correct. Um, I do want to point out, though, two things I didn't show you about this, is as the instructor, I do get a grade button. So I can go and see um, if there are any submissions for this. I could click grade, and Blackboard would show me those. Or I can click edit this assignment, and it takes me back not only to the course itself, but to the edit page for that assignment. So this is a little bit of a, a plus and a minus. So no, those instructions don't go on the calendar. However, for students, the link to view the assignment does. So they can link from the calendar to the assignment where they could see um, what those instructions were. And as the instructor in the Blackboard course, then you can grade the assignment and edit it from the calendar. And to your follow-up, Heidi, yes, if the assignment has multiple opportunities to submit, when the student clicks on a previously submitted assignment, they'll be able to see their submission, and there'll also be an option to begin a new submission. So yes, if there are multiple opportunities, essentially what Blackboard is doing is linking from the calendar to the course, and the course will handle multiple submissions. Uh, I did see, Isabel, you asked, does the assignment integrate with the discussion board as well? I did not specifically try a discussion board, so I'm going to try it right now. If I go into discussions, let me create a forum. Um, we'll call this introduce yourself. I'll give a brief description. Basically, just introduce yourself here. And let's give it a, we'll turn on grading. It's worth five points. And I'll give it a due date of October 11th and submit. And we'll see what happens. I will admit, I did not try this before. If I go to my calendar again, this was October 11th. And there it is. Introduce yourself. I think I can. Give me just a second. I will log out and log back in as someone who is a student in that course. Hopefully, this works so that we can see what happens for the student now when they access that course. Ooh, did I guess wrong? There we go, course 20. Um, but what I really wanted was the calendar. So yes, the student is in the course. That's an important distinction. And if the student clicks on that, 
I didn't make it in here. Oh, guess course 20 isn't visible, that's why. Make sure that your course <laughs> is visible on the calendar. And so as a student, if I click on that, it will take me to the discussion board where it actually takes me right into that forum where I can create a thread to introduce myself. So yes, Isabel, I think this is a great integration. When you create a graded discussion forum, it has to be graded. If it isn't graded, you can't set a due date. But when you create a graded discussion forum, then that will show up on the calendar. And as a student, you can click on a link from the calendar to go to the discussion board. So yes, <laughs> it works, and it works well. Let me log out and back in as my demo account here. Did I catch all of the questions? Um, I think I got all of the ones that have already been posted, but feel free to bring in any more. Uh, one other item I will show you on the calendar. So I've shown how it looks like if you add a due date to an assignment, we experimented to see a due date on a discussion board. The due dates also work on exams. And since they work on a discussion board, I would assume that they would work on a graded blog, wiki, or journal. I also want to point out, you don't have to have a submission point like those. You don't have to have an actual assessment in order to add a due date. So if you add a due date to a grade center column, that also shows up on the calendar. Here on the 14th, this was actually a an item I added to a column in the Grade Center in Guest Course 3. And in this case, when I added the due date to the column, I also added a description. So Heidi, this is actually kind of a follow-up to your question. The assignment instructions don't show up here. However, a Grade Center column description does. So if you don't have an assignment, if you just create a column for something that students are doing, like here, they were giving a presentation in class, so there was nothing to turn in. They're graded on the, their presentation in front of the room. And I'll just type in a grade in the column. Um, I did add a description, and that gave the instructions here. So it might be overkill, given that an assignment has a convenient link to go view this assignment and to duplicate those instructions. However, do know that that Grade Center column does show up. And I can show you that really quickly. If you haven't done that before, of adding a due date to a Grade Center column, when I go to the Grade Center and create a column, that is, as you scroll down, here under Section 2 for Dates. So I would, again, just click a due date, choose my date and time, and that will automatically add to the calendar. And on this view, this description text box, I honestly normally skip over. I don't think I'm going to skip it anymore, knowing that if I set a due date, this description will show up on the calendar with it. So those two work hand in hand now, and I think that's another great integration. Isabel, you have a, cal a question. If the instructor did not create the calendar or use it, will these assignments? Yes. Will these assignments appear on the student calendar anyhow? They will. If you put a due date on, an ID, on anything in Blackboard, those due dates will automatically appear on the calendar. So the workaround is if you don't put a due date, then they don't appear on the calendar if that's what you would prefer. If you don't want these to show up, then you simply don't add due dates. Um, but anything you add a due date will automatically be on the calendar. So Isabel, essentially every due date you set has a deadline. Let's, why don't you and I talk to that separately? Uh, the question is, if you have a discussion board that lasts for three weeks, but it's broken up into separate threads that have their own deadlines, how would this work? My short answer would be to create those directly on the calendar instead of using the integration. Um, but you and I can talk about that later, perhaps. There might be another workaround. I haven't thought through a complex situation like that quite yet. The next thing I want to show you, in addition to these assessment items, another tool that integrates with the calendar is the um, 
the Collaborate sessions. So just like we're using Collaborate today, if you schedule a Collaborate session for your course, that automatically goes on the calendar. So to demonstrate, I'm going to go to Tools in the course that I'm teaching here and click on Blackboard Collaborate and then create a session. So my session is going to be an online review session uh, for an exam, for example. If we have an exam coming up the next day, maybe I'll hold an online review session the night before. So again, I can pick the date to schedule this. We'll schedule it for the 23rd because my class is on Thursdays. And we'll hold a review session at night. So 6 o'clock that night on October 23rd. Uh, we'll make it fairly short. This will be just a one hour, 6 to 7 o'clock, 7 o'clock, not 6.30. 6 to 7 o'clock review session. So I'm not going to set other set other options right now since that's a collaborate workshop issue, but just to briefly show you, I've now created that session. Um, if I extend my calendar <laughs> on this page, you can see that I've created that session. And then again, if I go back to the calendar, that session is going to show up on the October calendar. Here on the 23rd, here's my online review session. And it gives me the link here, actually, to be able to view it. Um, as a student, I want to show, because this is my course that I'm teaching, I got the event description that could be edited. For students, on the 8th here, I have a class session coming up that's online. And I just get a launch session link. And I can't do it because I'm already in Collaborate. But if I clicked on that link, it would literally launch the session as though I were launching it out of my course or out of an email with a, a link in it. So again, for scheduled sessions in Collaborate, it makes it much, much easier for students to join the sessions and actually come into your online program. So that's the end of the ways that dates are auto-added to the calendar. I'm going to pause again because I know there are some um, questions here. So Heidi, is there an exception or expectation that the calendar is as binding as the syllabus? Heidi, when, the bottom, when it comes down to the bottom line, the syllabus is always the legal binding document. So as you use the calendar in class, um, you may want to point out to students that you have used the calendar. I think given that the previous calendar was so challenging to use, many faculty didn't use it. And so students aren't accustomed to going to it. So if you're going to use it, I would point it out to students and just remind them that while you are trying to be transparent, you're trying to be um, communicating with them through the calendar, that if there's a discrepancy between the calendar and the syllabus, the syllabus is the, the, the final word. That's the ruling document. Uh, Heidi, can we set up screencasting this way? If you mean by using Collaborate, then probably if you mean screencasting like this, um, I'm not entirely sure what you mean by that, so clarify maybe. Um, and then you also follow up the review session I just set up had a 100 point grade. It actually did not. Um, the way that the page uh, displays does have a, a a grade, but I didn't activate it. Um, I can go back and show you that. So it was in my course that I'm teaching. I'll go back to the Collaborate page, uh, and I'm going to edit this one so we can pull up those review, those um, settings, just so I can clarify. Down here at the bottom, uh, this Integrate with Grade Center does have an option for 100 points, but I did not turn on the Enable Grade Center integration. So I didn't click the checkbox, and that's why it, it's not actually 100 points, but I could turn it on and give students essentially points for coming to the, the event. So I apologize that that was kind of confusing. Heidi, yes, you, um, your 
software session with Dan would have been Camtasia for screencasting. Um, I'm not sure if you what you mean by putting that on the calendar. Those are usually uh, recorded videos. So you would post that somewhere in the course. If you wanted students to watch it, you could put a deadline, a reminder on the calendar to watch that by a certain date. But since it isn't live, um, there really isn't anything to add to the calendar. OK, so if there are any more questions, feel free to, to add those in as they come in. I have just a few more pieces to show you. One, um, I prom I told you about already, actually. I told you that it works, but I have not actually demonstrated. I'm going to go back to the calendar and to the October calendar. I said that this integrates back and forth with assignments. Um, anything that has a due date, you can actually modify the due date from the calendar by using that drag and drop. So this uh, October 29th reflection paper that I submitted um, has a due date. I could edit the assignment click by clicking on the item on the calendar and then clicking on that link. However, I can also drag and drop. And if I drag this to a different day, I'll give everyone a week extension. Then I can actually, I've moved the due date. If I click on here and go back to view that assignment settings, I have actually also changed the due date on the assignment automatically. So again, um, because that integration goes back and forth, when I create the assignment, it pushes that out to the calendar. And if I change it on the calendar, it pushes it back into the assignment itself. That won't change any availability dates. So if I had limited the availability to only display until um, the, previous, the first due date, when I drag it, it doesn't change the, due, the display date. So it will still close, and then students can't find it. But if I haven't used those availability restrictions, it will change the due date. Heidi, the uh, HTTPS, I think you mean, if I go back to the calendar, on the Collaborate session, I think you mean, um, which was here on the 23rd. This one with all of the code, is that what you mean? No, in the chat. Oh, the link that Anwar posted. I apologize. Yes, Anwar posted a link to Remind 101. Um, just briefly, Remind 101 is sort of a text messaging service where you can sign up for a website account at Remind 101. And you can then have students sort of join your course on Remind 101 and send text messages the text messages to them for free so they can get updates on the course. And or maybe you can describe more of it while I move on. Um, but it's a, a quick and easy way to send text messages to students for free. You would send it to the whole course. It's not a one-on-one -on -one, um, service. But you can use that. And we're saying to send reminders in case they aren't checking the calendar. All right, very last integration that I have to show you is all the way at the bottom of the calendar. And I haven't gotten there yet because I have so many courses in my course list. You will not have, your students will not have as many. You might have quite a few because every course you've taught that's still active in Blackboard will unfortunately show up in this list. But I'm going to come down here at the very bottom. I have a Get External Calendar Link button. This was the last feature that I had on that PowerPoint slide. You can actually take the calendar from Blackboard and push it out to another calendar system. Uh, GroupWise does not work this way, unfortunately, but Google calendars do. So if I get my external calendar link, that gives me a website address that I'm going to copy. And then I also, I'm already logged in over here on this other tab <laughs> to my Google calendar. So just briefly, the way that you can do this is to add a calendar. You go to other calendars, and you add by URL. And I'm going to paste that link here and add that calendar. So now, automatically, all of the items from the Blackboard calendar show up here in my Google calendar. 
The reason why this is useful is as a student, if I don't use the Blackboard calendar, if I'm using a Google calendar maybe on my phone, now I can actually view this from my mobile device quickly and easily as well. So if I'm already organizing myself with Google Calendar, now my course events can show up here too. You can't uh, send things backwards, so you can't take your GroupWise or a Google Calendar and put it into Blackboard, but you can push out. This will also update. It's actually sort of a subscription. So it will update based on changes in Blackboard. However, I can't demonstrate that because it does take some time for that to occur. It's not an instantaneous. If you add a new event in Blackboard, it's immediately visible on the Google Calendar. But it can be, it will make it over here eventually. Heidi, how do you get rid of all of those extra courses? You mean these here in the list? Unfortunately, right now, you can't do that. Um, that's not a feature that Blackboard has added yet. I would highly recommend that you contact them and ask for and submit that as a suggestion because there, it can be a very long list. Now, the only ones that will display here on the calendar are those that are checked. So if you no longer care about viewing items from a particular course, you can uncheck it and they're gone, but they don't actually um, remove it from that list of calendars you could potentially see. So again, I would highly recommend that you submit that as a feature request to Blackboard. They listen to those and they take them quite seriously. Heidi, um, they're listed alphabetically actually, alphabetically numerically. So um, for example, all of my BB learns are before the Blackboard, before the guest. And since all of the course titles now start with the semester they're in, uh, they'll group by fall, spring, summer in that order, and fall 2013 would come after fall 2012. Um, so they will be pretty, it should be easy to scroll through the list because they will be organized. But it's not by date, it's by alphabetical. Uh, Anwar did add a text message, or a a blurb about Remind 101, so if you're interested, for those of you who are in the session, there's a, a description of that in the text chat that I would recommend you to look at. It's a, a great service. All right, if there are no other questions right now, I have a few final slides that I want to share with you. So I'm going to stop the application share, and it'll take just a minute for <laughs> this to come back. So I should be back. You should see my slides again. So a few more features that I didn't show you but are worth knowing. One is that course events are not visible to students. In fact, the course itself is not visible to students in the calendar list until you make the course available. So if you have a course and you're planning it and you're placing dates on the calendar, students won't see any of those until you make the course available. On the other hand, if you want students to see the dates on the calendar before the course is available, then, or before the course starts rather, you can make the course available, add your dates, but then keep any content unavailable. That way they can come in, they can see the, um, they, they can see the dates on their calendar in Blackboard, but you can hide the content areas or you can leave the content as unavailable until you're ready for students to see it. And then finally, the calendar is mobile friendly. This year, Blackboard has made a co commitment that all new features are going to be mobile friendly when they are released and not as an uh, adaptation after the fact. In the past, Blackboard has released this service and then found out how to integrate it into the mobile app, and that's no longer the case. So the calendar is accessible from within the mobile app and does does not work with all of the features, but students can still see the dates and see what's um, coming up in the future from their phones within the app. Again, if you have questions, you can find more information on our site at niu.edu slash blackboard. And the calendar is listed in the communicating and collaborating area of the website. Again, my name is Stephanie Richter. 
And if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. Uh, my email address is here on the slide. Thank you so much.